Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I'm Lily Marston here with Jesse Smiles and if you couldn't tell, it's October. A very spooky episode. Look at us. So much effort put into this. Wow. Production value. I have to say the episode itself, um, you know, it's not really Halloween themed, but uh, we felt like it's the least we could do. The decision was made like five minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> We're doing the best we can here. Now, honestly, we have a Halloween episode. That's next week. About that. We, <laughs> You guys were really thinking big for Halloween. And to that, I say, we love that. Dream big in this world. However, there is a budget. Oh my God, I was dying at one of them that was like, okay, here's what you should do. You each should get ready and then you should vlog getting ready and then make it like a competition. And honestly, it was all a very good idea. Whoever left it, you should be a producer. Yeah. But I read it. I was like, oh my... What kind of operation do you think we're Yeah, running? I think people believe in us and like we haven't quite yet believed in ourselves. And so therefore it doesn't like mesh well. We're like, wait, who are they talking to? Like this isn't H3. This isn't like Howard Stern. Like we don't have that kind of like team behind us. We can order like a costume on Amazon. That we can make happen. A cheap one. Yeah. It's got to be below $20. But yeah, so this is like our pre-Halloween episode, but we still wanted to feel a little festive. You, I didn't even really tell to get festive. I just said to change the light color, but she came on. She had the good makeup. But see, Jesse does know how to get, wow, I can't talk. Jesse does know how to do makeup. What happened to your makeup channel? <gasps> called out um i just did i just stopped posting it all happened so suddenly like when i got pregnant I'm, i understand yeah. i was really excited about it for a long time and then i just there's only so much times you could be like this foundation is really dewy and cool on your skin and then it's like fuck i'm over it tell me about it and you do know how to do makeup <laughs> what was i doing for years it's just, <laughs> well yours was more it more fun like the adventure of trying to like learn how to do all of these beauty things thank god jocelyn was was there. <laughs> Jocelyn also was all over the place. <laughs> Even if it was the most boring thing ever, Jocelyn would say something and I'm just like, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened to Beauty Break videos? They're not on YouTube, are they? Yes, they are. What I was you... looking for them the other day and I couldn't find them. Have I been deleted? <laughs> I think they got deleted. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Some of them are still here. Just kidding. Oh, they wouldn't delete those. Those are the only things making <laughs> but... <laughs> true true well today's episode is an exciting one because lily has like a thousand topics for us to talk about and i know none of them and she's oh gonna God. tell me everything which is my favorite thing to be honest i only have two topics but the first one is literally i think it's all just bullshit and it's absolutely ridiculous and if it's not bullshit it's even more insane but it's basically a continuation of the don't worry darling drama or kind of like a side story or something i was gonna say subplot yeah. maybe <laughs> about olivia wilde and jason sudeikis uh because their nanny has come out with a bunch of explosive claims and a lot of text messages. Then we got a tweet about it, yeah, right? We did. The pink mm -hmm. sauce. Yeah, Jesse reminded me that someone had tweeted us that we need to do an update on the pink sauce. And I assumed that that was gonna be like, oh, the lady shut it down or something. Oh, no. But no. <laughs> oh my God, it's that she went on the Karamo show, which we'll get into all the messy details later. But um, if you go on his social media or his YouTube channel, the episode is mysteriously gone now. Yeah, no shit. He got like ran off the internet. I didn't know what I was getting into when I watched it. And I, cause I saw basically like clips of it through uh, Moist Critical reacting. Cause that's like the only remnants of this video online. And it's insane. So we're going to get to that second, but I have a lot of notes for both of them. So shall I get my Google Doc Yes. Out? And I did want to touch a little bit on the end on the whole Amaranth situation because a lot of people were like commenting on our last video and like tweeting me and stuff, wanting us to touch on it. And we will. The only reason why I was like hesitant is because it's kind of, she like responded and like let everyone know like she's okay and kind of updated everyone, but it is kind of still going on. And so I'm always hesitant. I don't know. These situations just make me feel uncomfortable. I more so just don't really have a whole lot to add to add it. Yeah. To it. Like, uh, there's not really commentary to give. It's just like, holy shit, I can't believe that's happening. Yeah. Her. Well, then I don't know. Are we going to talk about it or not? Because I feel like part of me also feels like, yes, that was like a cry for help. If you don't know, like Amaranth went on a stream and um, basically like let everyone know she's in a marriage and it's an abusive marriage. And it was really hard to watch. But then now she came back on and I guess they're trying to like reconcile or I don't know what. And to me, I just feel like that's her like business I don't know like part of me is just like whether she wants to stay with him or not like I just feel like speculating on it I hate doing that and like 
I don't know. We also, I think, feel like very much outsiders to that situation because, yeah. like, I didn't really know who she was before. Yeah. I've heard her name, but I'm not familiar with her content at all. Like, I don't think you should be speculating on anything anyway, but then also, like, we don't have anything. Like, I don't know anything about yeah. her. Yeah. So I just am glad that she has gotten help. I think it's a lot of just like her videos. So if you want to know what's going on, it's probably better to just go watch her streams. Yeah. On Twitter and stuff too, they have like clips of the streams. It's pretty triggering yeah. for like DV and like all that shit. It's just, yeah, it's definitely. a lot. When I watched it and then I kind of wasn't looking forward to talking about it anyway, because I'm like, I don't want to watch those clips again. Like it's really intense. It's not like a let's react. Like I don't Honestly, know. like I know that her doing that was a cry for help, but I also feel, I don't know. No, I just feel like the more people that weigh in on it, the worse it is for her. Like just in that to be married to an abuser and then that abuser is getting like reamed on social media. I feel like that's going to be bad for her. Not that like, I don't know. Obviously, I hope she leaves, obviously. But like, it's not that easy. And I know that. And I just I don't know. I just wish her well. And I'm pretty sure that that's happening isn't it? She kind of said that he like acknowledged that he fucked up and that when he hurt himself in the stream that he realized that he was such an asshole, which is like such fucking bullshit. You know, they all realize they're assholes after they fucking yeah, do some like crazy shit. Have to. <laughs> yeah. But um, she said that and then kind of said that she had control again over her accounts and that he realized how like stupid he was. She said she was getting legal counsel. So that could mean maybe she's planning on leaving him. I feel like I saw a clip where it was her saying that he was getting help, mm -hmm. which I didn't really know what that meant. And that she had like gotten back control because he had all control of her bank accounts and everything. And that she was getting legal and emotional. All I counsel. know is that no matter how much that guy apologized, he is a fucking lunatic. And like hearing him scream ah. like that. <laughs> if you guys don't know the full situation, you have to go look it up because we're not going to say the whole thing. But And I'm laughing just because it's like I was listening and it's like, what is he even saying? He's just like nonsensical yelling It made me want to like crawl into a hole. Like his screaming yeah. and his insanity was so triggering to me. And it is crazy because she's such a person that has like so many men and women that like think she's like the most amazing thing ever and like would love a chance to be married to her. And then you have the one fucking idiot who's I think that is the one thing to comment on is that there was I guess kind of a disgusting um, response from a lot of guys that were like well I mean but she's been playing all these guys saying that she was single for like what are you kidding <laughs> why do men I, why do men speak <laughs> it wasn't the majority it was like keemstar let's just call it for what it is keemstar oh, was God, the main person. i wasn't even gonna specifically say him and i didn't know how much of the response was leaning that direction but i just heard that that was kind of some of it, course it like, is yeah keemstar always is just the fucking worst and he even had to delete his tweet and like apologize because people were just like reaming him like your take is the worst he didn't even try and like tiptoe around it and like kind of make it okay he literally was like yeah well it's clear she was abused but and like but was on like its own line i just i don't hate a lot of people and i just hate them i hate that little man i don't know why he does what he does but regardless of the intention behind it i agree i hate anyone that would be able to do the stuff that he does and just like laugh it off but all that being said amaranth seems like she has like so, so we're not gonna yeah talk we're not gonna it. talk about it we just talked about it uh no but we don't want to like i don't want to show the videos i don't you know if anything comes to a point where i feel or like we feel like showing you guys the videos will help her in any way and like help the situation then we'll do it but otherwise i feel like everybody's seen it there's no need to continue to like play her like traumatic moment where she was like at a breaking point it just it's uncomfortable for yeah. me so we wish you well amaranth she seems like she has a really good head on her shoulder Shoulders and she'll fucking she'll she'll get it like I, I think that she'll leave him and I even if she doesn't you have our support obviously I hope she just takes a really nice vacation I was watching the um I remember who, who Ludwig I think um covering the entire situation and he was showing the streaming hours and that in the last year she has streamed more than Hassan Aiden Ross and XQC. XQC. I'm like, what are all their names? I know. <laughs> like really ragging my brain for those. Um, and XQC. All of them combined. Oh, it was combined? Yeah, and Ludwig. How is that even and possible? He said that he doesn't stream that much, but that it was like all of them 
combined in the last year, she has streamed more than them. But Hassan streams like every fucking day. I'm pretty sure all three of them do. Jesus. You would have to literally be filming all day, every day. Which makes a lot more sense when then you'd think about the fact that she was being forced to, essentially. Because she did 24-hour ones. Yeah. And don't you feel like, I mean, obviously we're not avid streamers, but like when I'm done... <laughs> Cut to our horrendous live streams that just went horrible. On. <laughs> that being said, don't you feel so fucking exhausted after like an hour and a half, two hour stream? I feel like I'm dying. I feel like I need to sleep for a week. I feel like someone just punched me in the gut. Like it's it's intense. It's like you're always on edge because you're like live and you feel like you're going to say something or do something you can't erase and everyone's going to see it or any. I don't know. It's stressful as fuck. I do feel like there's a different like genre of streaming that like isn't as like taxing <laughs> yeah and like direct is like paying to attention to the camera and stuff yeah. like i feel like there's a lot of people that i'll watch that i'm like people watch this all the time because it takes them it's like they don't do anything for five minutes they're just like sitting on their computer and they're rarely ever looking at the camera yeah you and me feel like we need to like fill every second of dead space and like <laughs> we're just constantly like just talking and it, yeah it's more exhausting you're totally right but anyway uh, for not talking about it, I think we can move on. Yeah, probably. Um, okay, so, wow. This article is so fucking long, and I, like, don't even know what to read from it because I'm like, do we care? It's not so much do we care, but I feel like we're in too deep at this point. We've covered, like, every aspect of the Don't Worry Darling stuff. It's like, why stop now? It's true, it's true. It's we're true. in too deep. Okay. This brings me flashbacks to when we filmed for, like, four hours for the Don't Worry Darling. I know. That's why I was like, oh, my God, don't let me just read this whole thing. <laughs> but quickly, before we dive into today's topics, we do want to thank our sponsor because, you guys, today's video is sponsored. Big milestone again. I mean, it's <laughs> it's our third one now, but it's very exciting. Thank you to Scentford for sponsoring sponsoring today's video. And if you don't know, Scentbird is a designer fragrance subscription service that lets you pick from over 700 different fragrances monthly. It's an amazing way to try out new fragrances. I have actually been a subscriber of Scentbird for months. I have like a ton of vials in my bathroom cabinet to prove it. They not only have perfumes, they have colognes and they have unisex fragrances. Because perfumes are a luxury purchase, definitely a luxury that I have not really <laughs> been <laughs> dabbling in much lately. Um, <laughs> Scentbird makes it easier to try out a bunch of different perfumes because otherwise you have to go to a mall and then you just smell them all in the store. And after you smell a few, honestly, they all start to smell the same and then you have a headache and it's a huge disaster. So this is much better. For $17 a month, they just send you these little vials and you get a really generous amount instead of just like those little tiny, tiny ones that you can use like once and you don't even really know if you like it. This you can use for a few days and actually, honestly, this is pretty big. You could use it for like over a week or two. Honestly, I use perfume pretty much daily and I have not gone through an entire tube once because I have so many different scents that I get every month. Honestly, if you use this every day, I would say it would last you about a month. And these are, if you've been a subscriber of Scentbird, you see the difference. These are different cases, they're brand new, and the tops and everything, it's just so cute. They come in different colors. This month, I received Commodity Paper, Catherine Melandrino Unconquered, and Just Bloom by Story Venezian. I am positive that I just said that horrendously. Glad I didn't have I'm to say completely it. wrong. <laughs> My favorite one is actually the Unconquered one. It's fresh, it has floral-like notes, but it's not overpowering floral because I don't do that. I don't like overpowering floral scents. And honestly, I would have never tried it if it wasn't for Scentbird. I would have never, I don't even think they would have it at like a store because it seems like a kind of obscure fragrance. But they also have brands like Prada and Gucci and Versace. So they have a mix of brands, which I love. They have the fancy stuff. The three I got this time were Raw Spirits Summer Rain, which actually ended up being my favorite. It's very like citrusy. Then I also got the Skylar Vanilla Sky, which does smell really good, but I don't really like vanilla for perfumes. That's I feel like it's the more popular like a, one. Really? Like like I've heard of Skylar Vanilla Sky, yeah, but I've never smelled it. And then Michel Germain in the Michel Orange Blossom Garden and French Vanilla. That's close second. Honestly, that smells really good too. It's my favorite thing ever. I've kept this subscription for so long because I love it. And it's just amazing that they're sponsoring us. It worked out because I love the service itself. And if you're a perfume lover or just someone that doesn't want to spend a ton of money on perfume, but you want to try a bunch of designer perfumes, Scentbird is it. And if you use our code DWKT55, you will get 55% off of your first first month with Scentbird, which is an amazing offer. And it really helps out this channel. So if you've been wanting to try it, now is the time. And yeah, thank you to Scentbird for being our third ever sponsor on Do We Know Them? Feels like we're all grown up now. I really do. I feel like we've passed so many milestones. I was recently realizing that we're getting to episode 20. Like we're just like Me right too. There. And I was really thinking we should get cakes. <gasps> I love cake. Me too. 
Great idea. Um, okay, so don't worry, darling. If you missed our episode on that, I suggest you go back and watch. I yeah. that It was a long one, right? Yeah, it's like very long. an hour and a half at least. It's very thorough. And then I think we do another update in another episode. But now the update is just specifically about Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis. And I feel like their relationship has been kind of a mystery because there was the whole um, process server giving her the custody papers while she was on stage. And people think that Jason and steak is did it purposely. I feel like I even read when I was pulling this stuff that Olivia had referred to it as like vicious. Well, and a lot of people were commenting on our Don't Worry Darling video when we reacted to her getting served. And they said that you can't control when the process server does it. I still... I'm, right? It just I, seems insane. I have my doubts. But. I'm still... Because one of the things was like, she had been dodging them and it was the only time that they could do it. I'm like, during her speed like it just feels like they could have waited five minutes also why would she be dodging custody papers it's not like divorce papers it seemed too convenient to like embarrass her publicly like that but i mean i know nothing about the legalities or like anything about process serving at all so you guys could be right and you probably are and then it also though seems kind of insane that like jason Stakus would do that but then you read all this and it's like oh my god if this is all true they're both insane <laughs> i'll just kind of like read through and we can react as we go. All right, let's do it. I'm ready. Um, apparently, or back when Olivia did a Vanity Fair interview, she said, the complete horseshit idea that I left Jason for Harry is completely inaccurate. <laughs> Our relationship was long over before I met Harry. But in fact, and this is all coming straight from this, oh, did I mention it's a Daily Mail article? <laughs> yeah, because this is a quote as if she said it, right? Um, that was, and it, Vanity Fair, it was a real interview. The uh, rest okay. of this is all just... <laughs> An Daily Mail being Daily because, Mail. Because, <laughs> well, it's, it's an exclusive from their source, which is the old nanny. Hmm. Okay. Which, like, it is for sure the old nanny, yeah. I guess. But we'll get to their statement in a sec. But it, okay. it is enough that it has brought Olivia and Jason back together. And they had made a <laughs> joint statement in response to this article. Oh but boy. yeah. So if you're unfamiliar, Daily Mail is not the most... Uh, Credible. They don't have a whole lot of journalistic integrity, you might you say. You would think, yeah, like... Like, it's hard because like places like TMZ are like they don't have journalistic integrity, but they're like always on point, you know, and they're always breaking the news. Daily Mail just doesn't have integrity and is always wrong. It feels a little more like National Enquirer kind of. Yeah, like when you go to the checkout of Publix and you see like Star Magazine, that like the shit that you're like, you should get sued for that. Like that Can can't be legal to say. That one time I was in the grocery store and I looked over and saw National Enquirer and I've never forgotten it and it was the funniest shit i've ever seen oh no the cover said titanic survivors found and it showed the boat underwater and people were like, like alive people they were kind of like zombie fish looking people almost and they were like <laughs> i'm literally so <laughs> confused are you sure you didn't dream that positive because it burned into my brain forever. That is anyway, the back to Olivia ever. Wilde and Jason Sudeikis. Daily Mail isn't quite that ridiculous, but it's up there. And this whole piece is apparently on behalf of this nanny who left working for them um, back in 2020. When and you would have to assume is getting quite the check for this interview. Oh, um, yes, for sure. And it, even if what she says about a lot of it is true, once we get to the end, you're just going to be like, Oh my God, are you kidding? Like, it's the most eye rolling. I've, it's, I love it's it. a lot. So this article says that in fact, she was, Olivia Wilde is, she was talking of marriage to Sudeikis as late as October that year, the nanny said, and broke up with Sudeikis a month later, just weeks after she began filming Don't Worry Darling with Styles in Palm Springs. According to the nanny, just a month before Wilde dumped Sudeikis on November 8th, 2020, very specific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did she mark it in her calendar? Like, that's when they broke up. But apparently the actress spoke to the staff aka the nanny, about her plans to marry Sudeikis and to make their daughter Daisy a flower girl. Like, that detail is just so, like, such a throwaway. Like, yeah, wouldn't you think their kids would be the flower? Like, isn't that pretty standard? Right, right, right. But all that changed after Wilde met Styles and swiftly fell for the singer, with the nanny claiming she even appeared visibly giddy and giggly around him when she took Daisy to visit her on set. I believe that. 
the thing is, too, is we've talked about that where it's like it has to be weird whether she cheated on Sudeikis or not. It has to be weird that she worked with him and then mm -hmm. like fell for him. Like that's a weird dynamic that, of course, Jason's going to feel like kind of weird about. So, yeah, I believe that she seems the like the type to be giddy around old Harry. So then apparently as this budding relationship continued, Wilde began spending more and more time away from home, citing work and eventually moved into the nearby $1,650 a night Paramore Estate Hotel in LA at the start of November in 2020. What's it like to be that fucking rich? I don't know, but sixteen fifty like, a night that would put me into bankruptcy in a week, <laughs> right? Like, does the movie pay for that, or is I she paying know. for that? I, I don't know. wow. Um, apparently, she told her oblivious fiance that the move was due to a COVID outbreak on set, but later she dumped Sudeikis during a visit to the house that they shared on November eighth. They're very specific about this November 8th break update. I'm telling you, she marked it in her calendar. But besides that, that does seem pretty plausible. Like it was at the peak of COVID. I mean, it's just a very specific thing to lie about. But I know it gets more bizarre. So let me reserve my uh, yeah, rallying for the, the nanny. Not part yet. <laughs> yeah, okay. Apparently, a distraught Sudeikis later uncovered the full details of her relationship with Styles by reading messages on an Apple Watch that Wilde had left behind. That is how a lot of people get caught. You know, I mean, it's been... It's it's happened before. <laughs> or like on someone's computer if their iMessages are open. Yeah, you would think because you can delete them on your phone, but they don't delete mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. um, you heard that, Ned? <laughs> this little tidbit is great. It says that apparently after he found out about the relationship with Styles via this Apple Watch, he swiftly banned the nanny from playing Styles music near the children. <laughs> <laughs> no Harry Styles played in this house. That's fucking... And that includes One Direction. <laughs> <laughs> and I just pray that that was true because that's epic. Get ready for so many more things like that <laughs> where it's like, oh, oh, okay, I don't know if that happened. <laughs> but you have to think too, like these Hollywood people, they would run into issues like that that you would never even think of. But it's like if you're dating someone famous and then they're like on billboards around you and like they're in your children's favorite TV show, it's like, yeah, you banned them. If Nassim cheated on me with like Jennifer Aniston, I would be like, we're not watching any more Adam Sandler films with Jennifer Aniston. Or like, you know, like, or no more friends in this house. Of course. Nassim's ex-girlfriend is from Turkey. Never met the, never met her. Don't even know her name, okay? But, sorry guys, but nine months after they broke up, me and Nassim met. And me and Nassim got married and had a baby oh, and like everything you. right after. Her best friend, she had her best friend message Nassim. Okay, and say, don't you think it's a little too soon to move on? Bitch, I never want to go to Turkey. <laughs> I've been Turkey in my mind. So I get it. I get banning Harry Styles because your kids like it. Like, I'm on board with that because I banned Turkey in my mind. Sorry to all my people from Turkey. I just think of it also as like Jason Sudeikis telling his like just hysterically like telling his nanny it's like alexa play harry styles he's like no alexa oh it's so good okay i'm excited to learn more this is way better than the original don't worry darling drama oh my this all was more entertaining i like kept copying and pasting like different portions of the article and i was like oh my god there's more there's more there's more <laughs> they were getting their money's worth for paying that nanny they're like oh for sure it, bitch well and here's another thing is that, you know like how when someone's telling a lie and they throw in like way too many details yes <laughs> and it just makes it like oh, you're like nobody asked like we don't need to know like what the temperature <laughs> was that day thank you yeah this definitely feels a little fabricated <laughs> It continues. Apparently, Sudeikis revealed the affair to the nanny and was like venting to her. And in a furious rant, he said that she, Wilde, had put the move on the former boy band star during a cast dinner in Palm Springs, where she also kissed him for the first time. Okay, in front of everyone? Like, what? At a cast dinner? You're eating it up. You believe it. <laughs> Is it obvious? <laughs> I do. I'm no key team nanny. Hold up, hold up. Such bullshit. And you're like, ooh, yeah, she would do that. <laughs> the nanny said it was supposed to be a temporary break for COVID, but that turned out to be how she left us. Us? <laughs> Just now noticing that us, that feels a little weird. Uh, <laughs> like, you're not that involved. Yeah. On the Monday morning, November 9th, when I came back from a weekend off, he was crying a lot. Crying and crying. I didn't know what had happened at all. After I got the kids ready, Jason came upstairs and was having some coffee. He was crying in a mess, saying, She left us! She left us! I'm not laughing. If, if this is true, then it's sad, but I don't feel like it is. 
<laughs> it was a little theatric for my taste. <laughs> he was just out of control crying. I didn't know what to say. He was just crying and crying and saying he was going to get her back and he loved her. He was so heartbroken. I felt for him. Two days later, Wild infuriated Sudeikis by pro- <laughs> this is okay. This is where are we at salad gets- dressing? Yeah, I forgot. I didn't even see my heading. It says special dressing. <laughs> Two days later, Wilde infuriated Sudeikis by preparing a salad for Styles with her special dressing. I'm just, I need to know more. Is it a vinaigrette? Is it more ranch based? <laughs> no, no one knows What's yet. the vibe? Apparently, she made this salad for Styles with her special dressing in the family kitchen. <laughs> it's like as if it was like in, in our bed. Yeah. <laughs> Where else is she supposed to make it? The bathroom? Leaving him ranting furiously at her and filming the encounter before... He, where's where's the video? <laughs> before he tried to prevent her leaving by lying under the car. I love that. You know, there was one time... Oh, all these things just bring... Oh, God. <laughs> if you're from my channel, you may know Jonathan, my ex-boyfriend. Lunatic, completely. Anyway, if you don't know him, better for you. But I dated this guy. I was 18 when I met him. He was 27. I was a victim, okay? Literally. Um, but we dated. We lived in an efficiency, which in yeah, wow. Miami, an efficiency is like a garage. And then they just like convert it into a room and sell it to you and be like, ta-da, pay me like $800 a month. Very popular in Florida. So we were renting an efficiency. name? Yeah, it's an efficiency. That's what we call it. <laughs> Not, one more it's not very efficient but anyway the people who we rented the house from they lived above us because it was a house and we lived in a portion of their garage one night i was so drunk and i was fighting with jonathan because he was being annoying as fuck and i remember i threw my sushi no he threw his sushi eel sauce got everywhere pissed me the fuck off i was like i'm leaving I went on foot. I started booking it. And I ran and there was like a side gate to the house, which is how we got in due to the fact that we lived in their fucking garage. And so I like locked, he went running after me and I locked the door after and he was like chasing after me. And it was the most theatrical thing you've ever seen in your life where I was just like locking the door and just running as if he was like a kidnapper trying to kill me. Wait, but did you get under the car? I didn't get under the car. I was running away in like a very, like it was a fight that got to such a theatrical point, which is where it ties into Jason Sudeikis, okay? Got it. Okay, that's where it ties in. It was so, <laughs> it was so theatrical. And like, should there have been ring cameras at that time, which hallelujah, there was not, that would have been the most embarrassing moment of my life because I must've looked, first of all, stumbling all over the place. I was drunk as hell. But second of all, him chasing after me, it honestly looked like Michael Myers, like in Halloween, like it's, it's somebody was coming to kill me and it was just a, a regular old um domestic dispute <laughs> anyway the point is i could see how he would get under the car because had we like felt like any <laughs> of us that the point well because if we could have driven like we were too drunk to drive but if we could have driven he probably would have gone under my car that's what i'm saying oh got it but instead we were on foot and so we just booked it <laughs> Anyway, I'm just, like, picturing you like Zendaya in Euphoria during her, her like chase scene. I've never seen that show. No, oh, if you're watching, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um. Anyway, shall we back to back to Michelle. Olivia Jason? Sorry. Yep. So apparently that night, the night she left with her sad. Like I cannot imagine seriously relaying this story to someone like this it says the nanny explained the night she left with her salad jason had chased after her videotaping her in the house she was saying i'm scared of you jason i'm scared of you and he said if you're scared of me why are you leaving your kids with me so then jason went outside and lay under her car so she wouldn't leave she got in her car to back up and he lay under her car so she I wouldn't actually leave. still believe it it's a little I'm, redundant. Still on, I'm still on board with nanny i'm not team nanny because honestly i just have to say right now as someone always got to bring in my perspective as a parent but um as someone like when you trust someone with your kids for them and she's the confirmed nanny oh get like ready. that's fucked up <laughs> like i think that anybody who works with your family or whatever you don't do this shit you don't fucking out because this hurts the kids because it hurt you know like you just don't do this so i'm not team nanny but i am on board with believing every single word that comes out of her mouth right now she went back in the house and he went in it was back and forth he said he was doing it on purpose to make her late going to see harry the nanny added jason told me she made Made this salad and she made her special dressing and she's leaving with her salad to go have dinner with harry i need the dressing and i need it now this is a real that's a sentence that is a quote <sighs> i've had some really good salad dressings but none this good <gasps> how good can it be i bet you anything it's a vinaigrette and honey ain't nobody dying over a vinaigrette <laughs> <laughs> the nanny goes i said 
what salad dressing? He said, she has a special salad dressing she makes for us and she's taken it to have it with him now. She says, I don't know what was in it. <laughs> Bitch, at least let us know more or less. Did it look like a balsamic? Help us out. This sounds like the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard. But then again, we are in LA. There's people that are aspiring screenwriters. Maybe there's someone that had got high and this was a funny idea. But like, how the fuck do you end up with something as random as a special salad If dressing. it's so fake, who would even in their, I mean, I'm talking high as hell. You're just like shooting the shit with your friends. You're just like spewing out the most random shit you can think of. No, this wouldn't be on it. Salad dressing? This has to be real. I don't know. People have strange senses of humor. Look at Deaf Noodles. But I That's mean. That's not a sense of humor. I don't know. That's a mental illness. Then the nanny says, out of everything. He was like, she made her special salad dressing and took it to him. I would be a little bit more worried about him with his salad dressing up in her shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, who cares if she made a vinaigrette for him? You have bigger it's fish to so fry. Weird. She's probably fucking Harry Styles. So apparently, despite agreeing to attend family relationship therapy sessions with Sudeikis, DailyMail.com can reveal Wilde became so besotted. Daily Mail is also a, a UK site hence the word besotted <laughs> with styles the family therapist compared her need for him to a drug addiction okay um <laughs> i think that's like a hipaa violation to like reveal that yeah wait literally i'm like who's the family's therapist you just threw that in there with no <laughs> source whatsoever the nanny said olivia never took those therapy sessions seriously like this is a lot of tw spelling about yeah. people like it feels like this is where i'm like okay sh stop she didn't want to go jason wanted her to go she had no intention of repairing things with him i think it made her look good there were those pictures of her giving jason a hug after therapy and it showed that that they were ending things in a really nice way. That was a lie. Jason was brokenhearted the whole time. It wasn't, oh, things are all good now. The nanny said that Wilde's exit triggered a spiral of erratic behavior in Sudeikis, including making his nightly drinking habit worse. Okay, and this is where things just get like, the nanny is like, okay, pack it up and go home. You got your check. <laughs> a representative for Wilde claimed that the nanny was not fired, but chose to resign. So apparently a representative for Wilde did respond to the Daily Mail and said that, but that's it. Okay. And then they came out with their joint statement to CNN, which I'll read in a minute. But uh, the nanny packed her bags and went to the $719 a night Rosewood London Hotel, where she stayed for a month with her dog. And apparently that month-long stay was paid for by Wild and Sudeikis. How much is that? $718 a night? Times 30. Do the calculations on something like that. $21,540. That's, That's insane. You know eat the rich. But then apparently after flying back to the US, she said she was cut loose without severance pay and she's been unable to claim unemployment because Sudeikis and Wilde claimed that she was fired or that she wasn't fired, that she had resigned. And so we found her reasoning for being here today. <laughs> the motive. She says, quote, I got nothing, nothing at all. I asked about severance pay, but they didn't give me anything. It has been terribly difficult for me. Oh, you just lived in a hotel for a month. I don't know how being a nanny works. Is severance standard for nannies? Although I know nanny is different than babysitter. So like a nanny is more live-in situation. I, she was a live-in, I believe. Okay, so like obviously they're every day and you expect like, I'm gonna have this salary for a long time. So maybe that's why she expected severance. But I feel like once you stop doing the service, that's it. And I don't mean to, I'm not like trying to demean nannies as a profession or say that she's not entitled to what she's legally entitled to, but it seems like she was wanting a little bit more than necessarily what she was entitled to and she did leave. Well, usually severance is something that's a contractual obligation. So like either your company that you work for or the people you work for have contractually agreed to give you a severance package when if you like leave, she probably didn't have that because otherwise she would be suing, not on the Daily Mail spewing shit. Her next quote is, Oh boy. The most difficult part is that I've been a nanny for 20 years and it's my career. I adore children. I was so happy in what I do. This just tore me apart and I was afraid to work with any other families thinking they're just going to hurt me. I started thinking all other families were the same. I'm sorry, I'm, I, am I missing the part of the story where she was the victim? Um, yeah, like, I guess I'll I'll pull up the text messages in a sec. Uh, oh, okay, because I'm like, from what I understand, Olivia and Jason had a shitty situation, according to her. Where does she become like the I can't trust people person? She kind of gets like caught in the middle of it a little bit, but it also seems like she's being very dramatic and it's 
interesting. She added, I texted Olivia four months ago and asked if she would be interested in mediating. I said, hi, Olivia. Hope you're doing well. Miss the children so much. She said, sending you love with a heart as if nothing happened. She spoke to somebody and they sent me an email and asked what I wanted to mediate about. And I said my wrongful termination and to give the kids a proper goodbye and let them know that I didn't abandon them. She never got back to her. Okay, so these first ones are between Olivia and the nanny, allegedly. And it's Olivia saying, do you mind checking on the kids for me? They were sleeping in Daisy's bed when I left. Just want to make sure Jay is okay with them. At 12.35 that night, the nanny says, hey, Olivia, sorry for the late reply. I went up to put the kids to bed. I fell asleep in Daisy's bed. Ha ha, so cozy. And then the next morning said, morning. And Olivia says, made my day. FYI, I'm not coming by this morning because things got very contentious with Jason last night. And I don't think I should see him until the doctor is there. So I'm meeting him at the doctor's office at 9 30. Just an FYI that's why I'm not rushing there for breakfast kisses which I would like to do every single time I'm not working. I'm on board so far I believe these are real. All right. Okay, so then we get to Jason and the nanny. And these texts, it's him saying, she left, she just left. And then the nanny says, I don't get it, before bed. Jason says, she left them, wide awake, sitting in Daisy's bed after shaming me for going to Kansas and not wearing a mask. Yes, blank, they're wide awake. I'm in shock, this is crazy. She just left them. I'll come put Daisy down, the nanny says. And then he says, took her salad and dressing and left them. I'm so sorry. Are you actually here? And she says, that's okay. Um, then Jason says, hi, are you here by any chance? And she says, I'm not. What's up? And he says, Olivia's not fucking here. And then he sends a screenshot of a message between him and Olivia, where it's like reminding her to go to an appointment. The nanny says, I actually have to come back for my laptop though. I'm down the street, I'll come now. Then the next one we have is in January, which is like a month after those. And it's Jason saying to the nanny, you are a good person with an amazing heart. Please don't think for a second you will be punished for any of this. Love will win, hashtag believe, which by the way, is like a thing from uh, Ted Lasso. Oh, <laughs> ew. <laughs> is the hashtag believe. So I'm like, oh, really? Oh, I, I don't know about that. So then the nanny says, morning, Jason. This is just too much already. I didn't ask for this and now it consumes my mind. I woke up again with anxiety and replaying what happened. I just want peace. Honestly, Jason, I feel like maybe you use that email I sent to benefit your side. So instead of upsetting her, you just got upset with my words and I look like the bad guy. Basically things you'd like her to hear maybe, but didn't come from you. Just my thoughts. Anyhow, have a good day. I don't want to distract you at work. And then he says, I didn't choose to share that email. I don't know what email they're talking about i know yeah it's all very confusing okay this is where things are like extremely aggressive and this is apparently the day after the nanny was uh, resigned and agreed to work for the couple for another six months while her replacement was found um apparently he says the nanny's name has not been released so that's what's blurred it's the nanny's name i'm going to call the police unless you come downstairs and speak with i think it's me and my sister Lindsay. it is your choice and then he says her name again and then says i do not feel safe with you in the same home as my children right now a simple conversation conversation would be very helpful please everything is going to be okay and then she says jason it's after 10 can we talk tomorrow you've been drinking and are really angry i'm very afraid of you right now i just want to go to bed with cooper i don't know who cooper is <laughs> we don't know anything um, on the show <laughs> the dog maybe jason says no please come down record everything my sister Lindsay is here and then the nanny says i'll pack my bags and then he says please come downstairs and speak with me first then the nanny texts olivia and says you have no idea Olivia, 911. Jason is throwing me out. Said he's calling the cops. He's angry and drinking. Got upset with me because I sent you that message. Please help. I don't know what message that she's referring to that she sent him. He said I have to leave tomorrow and is flying me home. Wow, really? Telling him everything I say but can't answer, yet you say you love and care about me? And then Olivia says, nanny's name, I'm on set and can't answer. Blank told me not to engage without Jason and I speaking together. And then the nanny sends a screenshot of Jason apparently texting the nanny saying you are not being thrown out. Then Olivia says, we both care about you. We're all trying to do the right thing. We just need to stay calm. She says, he's telling me I need to leave the house now, Olivia. I just want to go to bed. Wow. Okay, last one. It's Olivia and the nanny. It's the nanny saying, Olivia, I have a ton to tell you of what I've been dealing with since you've been gone. You wouldn't know because you haven't asked. I also sent Jason a revised contract and he had me resend a different one. I asked both of you for a letter of recommendation before all this mess happened. It's happening. I want to leave in peace and forget this whole thing. There's been major ongoing abuse and damage here as I'm trying to do my job daily. And then Olivia says, nanny's name. I'm sorry this has gotten so out of control. It's so 
hard to understand what is happening without being there. I will call as soon as I've spoken to Jason. I'm on my way to work now. I hope you're okay. And then the nanny says, Olivia, this has been going on since you left, not just happening now. The gist of it though is that the nanny like was dealing with Jason having like a mental breakdown and being like an abusive drunk but okay uh, and you from your text messages to me you think that all of these text messages are fake i mean it would have it not like photoshopped but it's like if you just saved another person as like, you don't think any of those messages were between jason and this nanny or olivia and this nanny no i that's what i'm saying i don't know i uh... okay I'm a gullible gal, okay? I really am. I mean, I'm not like QAnon conspiracy theory gal. gullible. I guess what I'm saying is I can't imagine these being fake. The salad dressing, every it's so specific. The salad dressing, it is so specific. It's so weird. It is. Like, it would be such a weird thing to just come up with. And then also, like, if you've gone through or witnessed anybody getting a divorce, it does get so weird and petty and messy and strange that, like, all of these things to me are completely plausible. I guess if it didn't feel so, and maybe I'm being an asshole and I take it back if all this is true, <laughs> but that it feels like the nanny is being so dramatic. Well, imagine like here's the thing about being a nanny like well that's like your whole life it's not just your whole life like you feel and yes you are being compensated to do so but it does it's a special like mind fuck because you are raising someone else's kids like it, there's no other way to put it other than like yeah obviously the parents need to work and whatever but when you're a live-in nanny day in day out you are raising other people's kids you do get attached it does get weird you do get a little bit too involved like I feel like that's something a lot of nannies have to deal with. She did say, left us. I mean, her saying that she wants a proper goodbye with the kids and stuff, like, I get that. Like, I feel like, yeah, that you basically raise those kids for how long? I don't think she worked for them for that long. How long did she work for them? Three years. I've only been married to my husband for five. And I feel like I've known him for like, since yeah, I was that's born. A, that's a while. <laughs> yeah. I take back some of my cynicism. I get it. There's a lot of haha -ha funny parts. Okay, the salad dressing, come on. Laying in front of the car. Get out of here. But there are a lot of plausible situations here that I can see this being real. Also though, you already said like, if it was legally, like if they were bound to like be paying her severance or something, or like, why would she go, Daily Mail? I, listen, I'm not saying that her selling this story is morally correct in any, at any capacity, but I am just saying, when I read the text messages, I expected them to be like, oh, this is so fucking fake. And I just didn't get that vibe. The second time around, they seem a little more well yeah because like olivia be speaking like olivia speaks like i feel and then i don't know how jason sudeikis speaks but it all just seems pretty plausible she was the confirmed nanny like she really was the nanny for three years you see some shit you live in this person's house like you've seen it you know what the fuck is going on so yes obviously i think she's selling the story for personal gain even if she feels she's doing it because she wants justice for like not being paid severance or whatever the fuck it's still just for herself she's obviously not doing it in the kid's best interest or like she's not mother mary okay which is why i felt like it was kind of like oh she cares so much about the kids but then she's you know what pisses me off really? there's so much nuance to situations like this and i feel like yeah. people put everyone in a basket and they'll just be like oh you sold the story that means everything you're saying is bullshit but that's yeah, not no, true no, i know that's it's not true, true. It's, I, I, it's not true that's what i meant <laughs> but at the same time when it's something like this where then you, you end it with like oh i care so much about the kids and it's like uh, why'd you come forward then like that what are you getting out of this besides money yeah if she's been a nanny for 20 years sure i'm sure you care about the kids not enough to like take care of the kids if they weren't paying you you know what i mean like it's like obviously you don't care about the kids like if they were your own like i said i think there's nuance to it i think that she there's a little bit of everything a little bit of her being a yeah. snake for selling it and all that stuff but apparently they said this was all a lie well so yeah then they come out with and they have not been like presenting on a united front for quite some time now <laughs> apparently they made a statement to cnn random so random. which i was like really that's nothing else like vanity fit i don't know felt like an interesting choice but um they said as parents it is incredibly upsetting to learn that a former nanny of our two young children would choose to make such false and scurrilous accusations about us publicly her now 18 month long campaign of harassing us as well as loved ones close friends and colleagues has reached its unfortunate apex we will continue to focus on raising and protecting our children with the sincere hope that she will now choose to leave our family alone tell us about the salad dressing though <laughs> just tell us what it looked like smell anything um no i yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i am still team nanny not team nanny like i support you but i'm like 
I believe this all, and I think Olivia Wilde's weird as hell. Jason, too. I mean, clearly Jason's weird with this obsession with the salad dressing, if this is true. <laughs> Guys, we have exciting news. <laughs> this is a breaking news update. <laughs> this is totally worth us getting ready again, filming again, because we just had to come on here and tell you guys what we found out. And it's, of course, what I already knew. Tell them, Lily. It's a vinaigrette. It's a vinaigrette. <laughs> and it's exactly what I thought. It's actually worse than what wait, I pictured. Wait, wait, wait. But so the best part about it is the entire world reacted. I didn't really care about the salad dressing because I, did. I don't eat salad. So it um, right. wasn't really a big concern of mine. But um, all of Twitter was freaking out. And I, Olivia apparently caught wind of the anger that she did not address the salad dressing in their joint statement because obviously that was the most right. important part of the story. So finally, to reveal. I love how everyone ignored everything else Literally, it's just like, like what's we don't the salad dressing Jason laying under the car it's that he laid under the car for salad dressing right right <laughs> I think I even retweeted or something or maybe I just saw on Twitter that someone had joked like Olivia come on just upload a picture of the recipe on your Instagram story and literally the next day she did in true Olivia Wilde fashion like she did it weird as hell so instead of just being like making a joke out of it or something along the lines of like haha this is ridiculous that everyone's making such a big deal out of the salad dressing she posted a picture from a book that was like a random fucking book it's like a Nora Ephron book <laughs> yeah super like obscure and weird and then at the bottom of the page is a salad dressing recipe and I know like I was telling my brother this who full disclosure does not give a single fuck about any of this and he was just like wait what so she posted it on her Instagram I'm like well she didn't post it like overtly she posted a page from a book and at the bottom of the book there just so happened to be a salad dressing recipe and you're gonna tell me that's a coincidence uh, to clarify it's not like it was written at the bottom of the book page like I, I'm sure we have it on screen already yeah. <laughs> but it literally it's, it's like part of the part of the story <laughs> of this book so she yeah. That's where she got this salad dressing. I did appreciate the self-awareness. I'm like, oh God, okay. Well, maybe she's in on this joke at least, finally. But, uh, okay, okay, I see that. Well, point is I made the dressing. <laughs> Ta-da! Only Jesse made the dressing because again, I don't eat salad, so it felt like kind of pointless. You also don't cook. <laughs> well, so do you want to read the recipe just to let people know what, what's in it uh, sure i just have to say also that this just fucking reeks it smells of just vinegar feet like it is just okay disgusting <clears throat> and it is a vinaigrette but it's on the rather thick side go ahead the book is called heartburn by nora efron yeah this literally feels like it would give you heartburn the smell is so sour mix two tablespoons gray poupon mustard with two tablespoons good red wine vinegar then whisking constantly with a fork slowly add six tablespoons olive oil until the vinaigrette is thick and creamy. This makes a very strong vinaigrette that's perfect for salad greens like arugula and watercress and what? And endive? And yeah. Endive? What is that? Uh endive is like um it's like a bitter green, I think. I I mean, I knew that I didn't know much about the salad world, but wow, I've never seen that word before. Anyway, that's it. Uh well, did you see Grey Poupon's um Instagram post? No. Well, I have it right here. It's called uh they posted uh Don't Worry Dijon on their Instagram. Does it have a boa around it? I think they did, yeah, do some poor photoshopping. <laughs> <I'm> so, but, <laughs> they might have used a PNG wait, I'm so and just smacked it on Why? there. Why? Uh, they just want it in, you know? You know how, like, it's popular to be, like, Gen Z marketer? Like, they like that, like, on Instagram, I mean, on TikTok, they have people that are obviously, like, very informal running those accounts, and people love that shit. No, no, no. I, so I think this I, I was totally, their attempt at that, but it feels like a boom. No, I totally, I actually appreciate it. I totally get the the bottle itself. I just am so confused why there's a boa around them. And it's horribly photoshopped. Yes, I mean, very, it could not be worse. very bad. Uh, well, I have never tried. Oh I my God, wait, they're actually releasing those. No, it says it. releasing 100 limited edition. Don't worry, Dijon jars. I didn't get one. <gasps> you too could win someone over with a dash of Grey Poupon with our limited edition. Don't worry, Dijon jars. Stay tuned for how you can get your hands on one. Wow, I have to commend Grey Poupon. They're quick moving on the... Well, you could tell they were in a rush with, <laughs> with the picture. I'm not sure if I've ever tried... D I was gonna say, don't worry, Dijon. Uh, if I've ever tried Grey Poupon Dijon mustard, Dijon, Dijon, this shit smelled fucking foul. There's, like it smelled like sour vomit. There's few things that I hate more than mustard. Oh, you would despise yeah. this. So when I read the recipe, I said, that is foul. Because talk about acid reflux, heartburn, sour, sour, sour. That's all I see with this dressing. It needs some honey. If it had some honey in here, 
okay. But anyway, it's rather thick. It looks like a honey mustard, but there's no like sweet element. Um, and I did get some arugula. Look at which you. I hate. Oh, I'm so I'm gonna this just seems like just such a sad meal for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I'm actually really hungry too. Uh, but I'm gonna try the dressing now. Moment um, of truth. See if it's worth uh, leaving my husband. Wow. Hmm. Um, I like mustard though. It just tastes <laughs> like mustard. <laughs> Honestly, it just tastes like uh, maybe like a pickle mustard. You know that vibe. What? I'm gonna throw some. Uh, you know, like a pickle. How does it... Do you know what a pickle I, is? I know what a fucking... I love pickles, actually, which is kind of weird. You do? Yeah, love pickles. When do you eat pickles? Not on a burger. Um, On McDonald's burgers, I get them, actually. But, um, oh. no, I, I used to, like, growing up, my favorite thing ever was going to amusement parks because they had, like, those giant ones. Uh-huh. Really good. Giant pickles? But um, any pickle. Uh, dill, specifically. I don't like sweet pickles. I'm really mixing that up. I'm just tossing it and it's doing the, the good pussy Yeah, I was going to say, it does not sound... <laughs> I hate rich people. <sighs> oh, come on. Oh, it's that bad? Oh, you would literally... Is this cheat day? I literally, you literally was going to say, next week on cheat day. Uh, first of all, arugula is so bitter. So the two flavors you get are bitter and sour as fuck. Ew. Nothing redeeming. That is awful, honestly. Oh, wow. thank you. But you see all those people, like you see the, the, hard you see the Kardashians. You see the Kardashians in Hollywood shaking their salad and you're just like, these people have no taste, like at all. I actually was thinking about this yesterday because I was binge watching all of the Netflix the show The Watcher and they mm -hmm. kept going to a country club to eat. It was It's Naomi Watts and um, Jennifer Coolidge. They just were eating salad every single time. And I was thinking Gross. to myself, like, I know I don't like salad, but like, does everyone like it enough that they're eating it for every meal? Honestly, some people in this world just have really bad taste. And I listen, I know this is just a quick update, but I just have one thing to say. I got bamboozled from a local Facebook group, okay? Why are you on Facebook? It's literally the only way to do things in this town. Like the only way to get things or like talk to people or meet people or find the right doctor. Oh, girl, when you live in a small town, join the mom groups, oh, join all those Facebook groups. They got you. Yeah. yeah, they're insane, but like they got you. So anyway, so I saw a post that said, you have to go to this donut place. It's the best donut place in town. I had been immediately influenced per usual. Like I was like, that sounds delicious and I need to go. Over a hundred comments confirming that this was the best donuts they've ever and had. And donuts are something that's like, donuts are generally good. So for people to go out of their way, you to can't be fuck like, it up. these are the best. There must be something special. Right. So I went, got a croissant breakfast sandwich. Fucking disgusting. I mean, I'm talking well, the croissant I mean, was like a shoe. Why didn't you get a donut? And I got six donuts. Okay. And a, of an assorted variety. All sorts of different textures and flavors. The oil they cooked it in was putrid. It left a film on my tongue and it tasted sour. And I had to throw out all the donuts. Oh no. Never in my life have I done that. Lily, I was so <laughs> offended and I was like, these fucking small town crazy people who think that this donut is delicious, you have to be shitting See, me. See, that's strange because I do understand what happens with like, uh, I've tried some places that are like really big on Instagram because their food looks really good, but then you taste it mm -hmm. and it's it's not bad, but it's just kind of like, hmm. But yeah. it seems weird that people would go out of their way to like. Out of their way. And Nassim said that when he told the lady he came from Facebook, she had the biggest smile on her face. I was like, of course she What did. if they're all like, she's like, I got another one. Accounts. No, literally. He's haven't changed the, the oil in four years. Disgusting. All of that to say that some people just literally taste the same thing you taste and they're like, this is delicious. And I think people with Hollywood are so like weird with health things that like they genuinely believe that this is good. Who's that lady that does it? Kelly Ripa mm -hmm. that eats like one almond a day. <laughs> like literally like it's fucked up it's not even funny it's like what the fuck they have all collectively the same shitty taste buds i don't know what it is about hollywood anyway i think it's kind of like you know maybe when you like don't have fast food I, I can't relate to this that much but like when you don't have fast food for a while and then you aren't craving it anymore that nope <laughs> i used to tell myself that that was the case in like not high true. school but it was a lie <laughs> fun update uh just delivering the most hard-hitting journalism we possibly can I don't know. It was fucking weird. Um, well, I didn't That's expect it. for this lovely Don't Worry Darling update. Well, it wasn't a Don't Worry Darling update as much as it was just a weird glimpse into Olivia and Jason's weird ass relationship and messy exactly. fallout. But I did have a lot of giggles, you know, not that this is funny. I don't think they're like family life falling apart is funny. But the salad dressing, I mean, come on. What do you want from me? Oh, my God. Okay. 
time for the pink sauce. I am excited for this. If you guys don't know, we covered the pink sauce in another episode as well earlier on. A lot of people came from the Try Guys thing. So I feel like maybe not a lot of them know. Uh, if you were on TikTok, you know. The pink sauce was this lady, Chef P. She put out a sauce. It was essentially ranch with dragon fruit, blended up, no preservatives. It was spoiling in people's fucking like packages and shit. It was a disaster. It started as like a, like a fun side hustle and then she started shipping it and you can't ship things if you haven't gone through the proper regulations and stuff to refrigerate it and stuff yeah she didn't put the proper like allergens ingredients amounts of ingredients like it was a, just a there was complete disaster a whole yeah big clusterfuck of like uh, how not to launch a product right and honestly it really sucks for her because the branding and stuff around it was great the hype around it everyone wanted to try it but then she just like didn't realize that there are like FDA regulations that she had to follow and stuff. But this all happened quite a while ago now. And now it has resurfaced because there is a girl that had one of thousands that reviewed this pink sauce because people did order it and get it shipped. It was like $20 a bottle. And this all comes because there was a girl that reacted to it. And honestly, it's like not a mean reaction. At all. And it's, it's like very honest. And we would have probably been far more... <laughs> way ruthless. <laughs> well she actually found a piece of glitter in her bottle did she not yeah and then she ends up saying that she's gonna send in like a sample of it to get tested i just want to say super quick that's not like a mean thing to do it was a huge interest on tiktok yeah. it was a big thing everyone was like pushing for someone to send it to a lab because they wanted to know what was actually in it because she was fucking up the labels and stuff and so it was much. something like it was like 300 dollars, and she was like i will pay for it it's yeah. fine <laughs> like it's not she was very nice about it yeah so it became like this ongoing thing on her channel to the point that then she gets invited to go, I guess, like reveal the results and kind of confront Chef P in person. So Karamo, if you aren't familiar, Karamo Brown is one of the Queer Eye guys. And I don't know if he's known from anything else, but that's definitely what I recognize him from. I don't think the show launched that long ago and it looks like it's like a network show. Like it looks like it would be on TV yeah. budget wise. Is it not on TV? It's just on YouTube. What? So I don't know who is funding it, <laughs> but there's money, clearly. He just used the old Wendy Williams set. It seems very, <laughs> literally, but it seems very odd to me that there would be seemingly so much money behind this show that they'd be able to make it that there wouldn't be producers that would like do the proper home like it's not even proper homework i don't know how anyone would look up pink sauce and come out with like a ah oh, she just made a little mistake and like a pro chef p stance yeah not no that popular. that would that's a very strange take that i don't know how you would land on yeah I've seen shows like this, like there's the Red Table Talks and stuff, yeah. that they have guests on and they don't know very much about their guests. And it becomes a very kind of awkward interview because- And can we just, it's like so fucking frustrating. It's very, very frustrating because they don't know what issues to push on and then it just, they all kind of talk in circles. I feel like some people may feel that way about our show because I get it that when you talk about so many different topics, you can't possibly be well-versed in every single one. So you feel like, you can get by with just knowing the surface level of things because like, we don't know who this, what is his name? Carmano, Carmano. Karamo. Karamo. So I don't know who Karamo is. So like we can only review the surface level stuff and then there's gonna be a Karamo stand out there who's like, you fucking dumb bitches. But, 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 but Jesse, they have producers. We don't have any, like if we don't- Right, it's just me and you in our, our research, It's because we literally didn't do our research ourselves. Right, that's true. He has people that are paid to do the research, which is my point. Like there's clearly a budget here. That's True. All these shows have producers. It wouldn't take more than 15 minutes to develop a decent take on any of this. Like Dr. Phil, half the time has, half, 99% of the time has the worst fucking takes ever. And then like Wendy Williams, was the worst yeah. takes known to man. So like, I feel like maybe it's mixed in with their actual opinion, or do you think they literally get handed a script? Like, here you go. Both, probably. Like if they feel like they want to deviate from the script, I think they can, yeah. but I think they're kind of given. That's the thing is they should be having someone prepping them right before they're going on being like, this is what you need to know. This person, it, like, I don't even blame pe like talk show hosts if they haven't actually seen everything they're talking about or it's like if they're talking about movies or TV shows. Yeah. They don't have time to watch all that. I get it. So if someone like preps them and gives them the info and they're like, this is what you need to know. Focus on this. Yeah, that's they're good at their jobs when they're able to take that information and do it. 
it. But you're going to see, uh, like, I didn't even know what to expect going into this because also Karamo on Queer Eye is usually, I don't know their exact, like, titles or anything but he like is like the culture guy that like Ooh, the one who's like in the here and now and knows what's going on yeah <laughs> and so i just kind of like okay you're okay. so right though like you cannot search up anything on the pink sauce without people annihilating this woman maybe that's why he felt the need to like protect her it's very strange so i guess basically also so it aired like uh, originally early October and was up for like two weeks but then moist critical reacted to it and I think that that was what like blew it up to get it then taken down oh mysteriously. My God. And they have literally wiped any trace of this episode from everything. But you can still see all over the girl's TikTok because she even duetted their original TikTok of the show. It's deleted. The episode is not there anymore. So we have to watch it just moist criticals and don't get overwhelmed by links. These are all like 10 second time codes just in case we want to skip through some of his commentary, but you'll agree with most of all it. All right, let's do it. Okay, so here we're going to just watch Moist Critical's reaction. I'm going to try and skip to just like parts of the episode. No offense to Moist Critical. It's a lovely reaction, but it's our turn to react. <laughs> her online business quickly went downhill when her social media followers and customers turned on her. Everyone, welcome Chef Pete to the- You shipped poison, <laughs> like- This is a full on fucking production. I, yeah, so uh, again, this is a YouTube show, but uh, they have money. But also money wouldn't require, like you don't require money to be able to figure out that pink sauce, like we could figure that out. We right. don't do a whole lot of research usually. <laughs> Did you have a negative response from your customers? Yes. Why? I made a mistake. Um, what was the mistake? Was a packaging mistake. So uh, initially, that was the only error. Someone who received the first order was someone that I knew personally. Mm -hmm. So she called me. Contact each and every customer. We contacted everyone directly, meaning single emails, and let them know, hey, the shipment got damaged. We're aware of this. We will either refund you or send you a brand new bottle of okay. pink sauce. So pause real quick. Um, the shipment got damaged. I thought it was a packaging error. <laughs> the thing is, that wasn't even an issue I remember. I remember the actual, like, bottles swelling up in the fridge, seeming like yes. they were fermenting. I remember, like, the label errors, but, like... She never acknowledges the, <laughs> the rotten ones. Oh, she doesn't? <laughs> no. That's, I guess, I think maybe what she's referring to is the shipping problems. And oh. then the packaging problems is the lack of telling people that there's dairy in it. Oh. And, like, allergens and And, like, stuff. potentially killing people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this one mistake of packaging with your pink sauce. One mistake. Yeah. Oh my God. People creating exaggerated stories about your product. About Does this guy know at all what this is even about? <laughs> Sorry for the moist critical part of it too. But so you made one mistake. What? He's acting like she like spelled pink wrong. I just don't get like when you have a show like this, why you would come into it with such a bias in any direction. Like just let the people talk. Like you don't have to be like giving her an out. Just be like, hey, what happened in your from your perspective? Agreed. But also, why would you get behind something that's like very clearly to anyone with eyes and a brain violating FDA guidelines? I don't think he knows that part. Anyone could, like, I, yeah. I just love that we were talking about dressing earlier and now the sauce. It's just a very interesting episode, but okay, sorry. Honestly, I was thinking about that earlier and I forgot to use it as a segue. <laughs> so yeah, this people came up with exaggerated stories. No, they showed that your product arrived and was like If anything, and gross. Mm, like the beginning of the pink sauce, I think we talked about that in, in our episode. It was actually just anticipation of like, oh my God, we want to see what people think of it because it was yeah. pink, which is like, are we really that easily pleased? Like, come on people, let's- raise our standards yes, here okay so. but that being said like that was the narrative in the beginning and it wasn't until it started being like low-key disgusting like watery ranch with dragon fruit in it and inconsistent ingredients that people started jumping on the train of like what the fuck is this but that was not and the original inconsistent thing in color <laughs> oh and everything every aspect of it and then she said there was no mayo and there was like buckets of mayo next to her when she was making it there was a lot of inconsistencies and that was literally the problem Nobody cared like, in the there beginning. There were so many issues. And then the only like packaging error, aside from like not including all the ingredients and stuff, I think, was that like the serving size was wrong or something, which like Way that's, wrong. Not, that's the least of your concerns, yeah. Chef P. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Get ready. Oh boy. Uh, I created this sauce for fun and food. 
what I appreciate about I'm sure the sauce was fine in person. Is that I know that we're talking about pink sauce and this is fun and But you can't ship it like that. What I mean and ignore all regulations. The aftertaste. So then they start showing <laughs> the aftertaste. This girl doing her pink sauce review, which again her name's Allie and it is not a scathing review. Chef P refers to it as harassing, I guess, at one point. Definitely not worth $20 a bottle, but we support small businesses. I don't know if she's fixing things or not. That's not is this my even problem. a critic? This is this is like a paid shill at this point. <laughs> that was like an actual just hashtag ad. No, literally, that is the nicest critique I've ever heard. Yeah. So then this girl comes on the show. Label. You know, when you make a USDA label, you have to put in batch numbers because if something were to be recalled, you have to be able to trace it down to the salt and pepper that is in something. Yep. Actually, yeah. right. So if something she's right. Not to cut, not to cut you off, but to cut you off. So you didn't see the video because you follow me, right? Well, I want to hear Ali. I'm yeah, give absolutely. You, a you had your time to okay. talk, so just let me have mine. You could have contacted me, and I could have turned around. And I'm not a hateful person. I could have been like, "Wow, Chef P contacted so me." So you're saying that you contacted me? No, I'm saying you I didn't never contacted received... me. Okay, but why would I contact someone who's fabricating something on the but internet? Nothing. You're fabricating not what? Honest. She just reviewed the sauce. It's taking everything in me not to yell into this microphone girl when you what? own a business you cannot be stank as fuck oh my god she believes in the opposite of the customer is always right as customers is never right. it is very clear because she is just not letting Ali you have can't any of do this thi like okay there's something to be said about a manager that like stands up for their employees and tells a customer to go fuck themselves when they're being wrong. Love that. But this is embarrassing as hell. I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. I can't believe this is a show. For the most part, he's kind of like, just like peppering in little, yeah. just like, little he's not really for, saying yeah. much. This is shit like, if you've ever worked retail or anything, this is shit you say like behind the scenes. This is like stuff you talk shit about the customer behind their back. My mom owns a candle company, small business, does it out of a room in her house. Epic, love her, La Luna Glow Candles, check it out. But she literally, like if she ever did this shit online, even if it was Instagram stories, I would just full on tackle her. Like, I would be like, mom, just I'm taking your insane. phone. insane. And she was so confident about all this. And going into the show, she, Chef Pete was very confident about this. But also, I'd like to point out that one, don't send hate to anyone involved. That's stupid and pointless. But apparently, like the whole reason that this girl has been brought on is because Chef P is trying to like frame it as that this girl has sent like this hate mob after her and people are threatening her and her children and all this stuff. And are I'm like- they? To be honest, the people that I saw that were doing the worst reviews were the people that didn't even get the sauce. It was like people who were just commentating on like the things that they saw online. And even then it was just them being like, hey, this doesn't make sense. I did not see a single soul bullying this woman. Like, come on. Okay, but why would I contact someone who's fabricating something on the but internet? Nothing you're fabricating not what? Honest, you're not special. You're not special. Okay? okay. So People are clapping. Not just scattered claps. Lose my mind and what are they clapping for? <laughs> also, what are they clapping though, for? I have to wonder, did we ever see an audience? Is there an audience? There was in the beginning. You saw them. Okay. Could have been like B-roll film from like the Wendy Williams days, honestly. Because <laughs> like maybe it is just the sound effect going <laughs> but i don't know and she was like why would i contact you but i thought you contacted every single person individually by email and rectified the situation i hope you know that if you ever buy any of this woman's products you're not special just so you know <laughs> who says that as a business it's owner? rotten we don't fucking care you're not special keep it to yourself literally she wanted people to just write about it in their diaries like keep it to yourself uh, don't bully me like girl you made some fucked up sauce and people called you out that's it and that's the thing it's like they're not critiquing you as a person it's it's like, well, that's the funniest part because she's acting like a pit bull right now. Like, you're not like, girl, like, then why are you so sensitive? She shifts her tune later oh. and like, she's like, when I said you're not special, I didn't mean as a person. <laughs> but um, first. Hey, girl, you know what? I see what you're doing. It's amazing and all. I'm a supporter, but I think you should look into this. Take this step. That's what she's saying. Did you she research this? Did you check out your packaging there? Why would she do that? 
She is not your goddamn manager. Thought I'd leave that voice critical to admit it. Dude, because, seriously. True, why the hell? It's not her responsibility to like address your, like you can only receive hate if it's formatted in a certain way. You're not a legitimate business. You're a private chef that decided to make a sauce in a bucket and sell it. Okay. That's literally what you did. And you only sold any single bottle of pink sauce because of the internet. Girl, then what the fuck game do you think we're playing here? Like, this is what it is. You put shit out there. People will either, and I've said this a million times, especially with like the Todrick Hall thing. When something's bad, people are going to call it out. And yes, there's the stray ones that will say it's bad regardless, right? But like, yeah. if it's a delicious delicacy of a fucking sauce, people aren't going to go and like gang up on you just because they feel like it because your sauce is pink. Like, that's why I said though. And that's why it's, this is even weirder that this is just like happening on this show that clearly has a production team. There's a reason this girl came on the show and they knew that it would get a lot of eyeballs. So why the fuck would they take this and take? It, it low key feel like Chef P knew that she was going to have support when she went on the show. Almost like if she was told. Oh, for sure. And when you see one of her Instagrams, you'll see that too. I got an offer to be on Dr. Phil like in 2013 because of everything that went on. They basically reassured that I would not like look bad and I thought that was weird as fuck I was like no thanks <laughs> but they were like yeah don't worry like we we don't want to like exploit the situation we just want to do it in a very respectable way whatever and for sure that's the type oh, of email she got yeah Dr. Phil never fails versus trying to tear down my business and my livelihood she literally was like tastes kind of like watery ranch <laughs> First of all, the pink sauce is not your livelihood. You were a private chef before this. What are you talking about? True, true. And like, honestly, she ends her thing with like, but I support small businesses. I'm serious. I saw a million reviews worse than hers. Is she just the one that agreed to come on the show? Like, why are they picking on her? That's the thing. It's like, I wonder if it's deeper than that. It's because she was the one with the results and they were trying to like. That's what it is. Yeah. Get a handle on that. It has to be that. There's no other get rhyme or reason. She was like so ready. nice. Oh, boy. This part it it had me i i literally i lost my shit because this was like collectively this has all been absurd but oh my god out to you but she reviewed your product i'm gonna touch your hand when and I made it safe i'm gonna touch or your hand to see if it was safe. that you're not special i meant that as you're not special as far as someone trying to hurt me use different topics to build their platforms that's all I'm saying. What are you clapping? What are you clapping? What are you clapping for? Literally. I think this is a moment of reflection. Absolutely, and I think it's a mo moment of learning on both parts. I think the learning is more on your part. <gasps> yes. And then Stop. Stop it. I think the learning is more on your part. Do you live in fucking Jupiter? I literally, I'm freaking out again watching it. How? How is that? How is that real? Oh my god. <laughs> And then the way he's like, I think it's more on your part. Like this very condescending, are you joking, sir? But like, in what way could he possibly think that she needs to learn from this? That's the thing. I'm like, what reality are you living in? Because we're not there. I saw this, um, I think her name is Savvy Loves Books or something like that on YouTube. And her biggest thing is that reviews are not for the creator, whether it's an author, whether you're a musician. Reviews aren't for you, the person who created it. You already did your thing by putting your thing out there. Reviews are for the consumer, for consumers to let other consumers know mm -hmm. and vice versa. You don't have to like it. You don't have to approve of it. You really have no fucking say in it. And it's in bad taste to be like, you should not have spoken about what you you bought with your own hard-earned money because it hurts my feelings, the person who made the thing. Irrelevant, doesn't matter. And to misrepresent her very valid criticism as a paying customer of this product as trying to tear down her career. Like, I get it if she was on camera just calling her ugly or like something super weird that she's like, hey, you were bullying me for no reason. Even then, it's like, just let people do what they do with whatever they want to do with your product. But this girl's like an angel. What the fuck is going on? That's pretty much it for the episode as far as what's on Moist Criticals. If we can find it somewhere else, I'll see if there's any extra clips. Well, I can I see why he deleted the episode for sure. Yeah, so the episode 
gone. It was up for two weeks and it got like 70,000 views. And then Moist Critical reacted. That's what it was in Moist, like you could see in his watching of it, what it was at. So then I go to the girl's TikTok. <laughs> We're gonna go a little out of order. This is all gonna be after the show. And then I also have some that we will look at from before, like when she first announced that she was going on because it was kind of an ongoing narrative on her TikTok that she was going to get these test results. Right. But so first on 926, the show aired on 918 and 926, she duets a TikTok that the Karamo show posted and is now deleted. Awesome. Started using dragon fruit and the pink sauce was created. Did you have a negative response from your customers? Yes. The smell that's coming out of this bottle. It's like edited very dramatically. When I was doing the review, there was just so many red flags that I saw in it. I'm sorry if they hurt your feelings. I don't care about my feelings. I am talking about the thousands of threats that me and my children have received from the false accusations that what you all accusations? are making against me. At the yes. end of the day, I don't think you're fully taking accountability. Stop. Like, what? Dude, I'm not even lying. This level of like gaslighting is insane. And I would have been so overwhelmed right? on set. I would have been like, like, what? This is what I, I, why I was texting you this morning. I was like, I'm losing my shit. What is happening? Because this doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm going to read the caption for this. I still don't believe I should be the face of all the negative videos made about her. When you can go back and look at all the videos and see it was not done to her. Just my concern about the product. I'm sorry about the threats she's receiving, but they were not from me, nor did it come from my direction. At the end of the day, I wish her nothing but well wishes and glad she's doing things right now after hearing everyone's honest reviews. I'm sorry. She's lucky that she got out of this without any fucking lawsuits let alone to blame the people critiquing her right i'm like why if all these false allegations are coming out then why are you like addressing them on the karamo show and not in court that feels a little strange <laughs> i like also that ali commented on that same tiktok um and said honestly i'm not sure why the show took down the video from all platforms very interesting <laughs> also i pulled all these to show she has a tiktok following already i don't know if it's all from the pink sauce stuff but i don't get the vibe that Allie's really like trying to milk this and make this her thing. Yeah. She has posted a few things about it, but she's actually handled it much more gracefully than I definitely would. <laughs> if that happened to me, I don't even know how she didn't, I guess she probably just froze when she was on the show. Right. But like literally that gaslighting straight to your face when you're like flabbergasting. What? I mean, absolutely. I would be stunned. It makes no <laughs> sense. Um, but here are her actual thoughts on the full situation. This is like a two minute video. The videos about the Karama show are deleted, so you can't really go view them. As of a couple days ago, a lot of YouTubers made um, a video, like a reaction video, and it's gotten a lot of attention, and now the videos are nowhere to be seen. So a lot of you guys think that I shouldn't have apologized, but I am sorry for the death threats that she has got, even though that shouldn't they are be. not directly from me, and I don't think that my video was a domino effect. No to create it wasn't. Um, <laughs> negative At comments all. because as you guys can see like you can go back and look I didn't mean anything hateful out of my heart and all my did. friends and family and people <laughs> around for me Shippy. know yeah. you know that's not the type of person I am I still don't think that she should be getting hate right now because her opinion is her opinion you guys are not going to change it and I don't think that it's sincere at this point. Of course, I think that certain things needed to be addressed. They still need to and not be swept under the rug. But at this point, like there's no changing other people and you have to come to terms with that in order to move on. People are only going to do things that they want to and what they believe is the right way to do them. Yeah, it's illegal though. I felt bad for <laughs> Chef P and I still do. And even after the show, I wanted to reach out to her personally and be like, you know what? Like, I'm sorry if you feel this way about me because I don't like when people do not like me. Uh, Same. <laughs> Bless you, but you're, you're being way too nice. Way like, too nice. <laughs> they literally bombarded you on, I want to say, like a national TV show, but I guess it was just a YouTube National show. YouTube channel. <laughs> if I were her, I would have been, I would have posted far worse things. Like, you didn't even have to say anything. You could have just posted a clip from the show. Girl, you're an angel. That's all I'll say. Yeah. And I must be a, I must be a bitch. Because <laughs> I know. I was like, oh God, I'm reevaluating my life now. Because bless you. I think I would have just had to like completely get in a screaming match with this lady on the show. But I understand like being so flabbergasted by like, oh, this is the ankle that's being chosen. Like what? I just 
If Karamo said that to her, I'd be like, excuse me? Oh, I also don't know if we played the clip of the Karamo show where uh, Chef P basically says that she's trying to like nullify any test results by saying that the girl stuck her finger in it first when she was pulling out the glitter. So anything she sent, like she's insinuating that it would have been contaminated. So you can't take the test results seriously. And it's like, oh, don't think that's how this works i mean actually i think that is how it works the second she could have touched something air, in yeah, yeah it's like it wouldn't have been legitimate but everybody knows your sauce was funky as hell like true I'm like, <laughs> but it was rotten and you weren't refrigerating it and you were listen i don't I didn't need the lab results i wasn't holding my breath for them i knew your sauce was fucking trash it's just weird it's so weird he could have gone it and it could have been interesting the whole lab result thing everything it just makes you think how much of it was a lack of preparation or how much of it was a favor oh my god a favor that's a good conspiracy theory i believe that right like i mean that's the only like otherwise you just have to be like karamo we need to work on some things <laughs> so interestingly i tried to look unfortunately the wayback machine did not have chef p's instagram a month ago but i did actually pull a thing that showed she did have a ton of it wouldn't show me the actual pictures but i could still see the captions and she had a bunch of pink sauce stuff on there if you look at her instagram now there's not a whole lot of pink sauce stuff oh, there. Oh, really? Very, very little. She has done quite a bit of liberal clearing out of her. Oh, my God. When we filmed our episode and I was looking for assets, the entire fucking every social media she had was covered in pink sauce. Well, so the thing is, I don't know, though, if it was because of this or because of all of the backlash originally. When we did our video, it was like at the peak of her like cancellation for her pink sauce. So I imagine it has to be because of the Karamo thing. The bio was not like a recent change, but it's not even in her bio, which I thought was interesting. So yeah, the only things still on it are like articles that were written and screenshots of them. Yeah, I honestly just find it so embarrassing as a business owner that she's acting this way. And to me, it's like, if she comes out with another sauce, I would probably buy it just for the show. But other than that, like she, who's really gonna support this person in business moving forward? Well, it's who's gonna trust you? <laughs> But also, I look at this screenshots of an article in Women's Health from August 2022. So again, after all this has come out that like there's swollen bottles that people have gotten and it's like all looks really sketchy. The subtitle on this is the pretty condiment contains a potentially anxiety easing ingredient. Fuck does that mean? Who does she know on the inside that's giving her all of this positive press? Keep in mind, so this is now deleted. It looks like it was an actual post on her page. This girl, Allie, had put it in her TikTok, but it's not like linked. Oh, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Chef P here, and I am behind the scenes at the show, Karema, and I am so excited. I can't wait for the episode to come out for y'all to see the real... So, kind of cuts it off, but... Again, like you mentioned, why is she so excited to be on this show that is going to be this confrontation about her sauce unless she knew that it was going to be positive? It's painfully obvious that she thinks she's some sort of celebrity. And that is giving me yeah. secondhand oh, embarrassment. Sure. Really bad. So then she posts this one and the caption is, I'm literally already throwing up, which I, yes, I, I would be as well. And on the actual TikTok, it says, when the episode of you and the pink sauce lady going at it in front of a live studio audience airs in two weeks on NBC and you don't even want to relive it. So it is on NBC. Oh, so that says NBC. So is it on a TV show? They probably just like re-uploaded on the Karama show YouTube. Oh yeah, I guess it is. They do put it on TV, but. I love when we find out something at the end of an episode, but we've been wrong the whole episode. <laughs> But, but, but in my defense, the reason I thought that was because the link tree in from his Instagram was like going straight to the YouTube. Lily, we are, we are who we are. Okay. Honestly, I loved this episode. I, I, had I so honestly much fun. would, because guys, Jesse was like not feeling that great this morning, was no. like not super into filming. And I was doing the research. I was like, you just have to show up. But then I was doing the research <laughs> and I kept texting her, being like, no, this is so fucking funny. I like, it's the most absurd thing. I it was. From salad dressing to pink sauce, we've, we've really covered all bases today. I loved it's it. A I literally. Condiment episode. I feel <laughs> like I've like laughed more in this episode, like making it than I have any other episode we've done. I had a great time. And also just another thank you to Sempert for sponsoring this video. A reminder that you can use code DWKT55 for 55% off your first month. And yeah, I think that's it, right? Yes. <laughs> thank you guys so much. We love you and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.